Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect, and today we're going to be talking about Azure Site Recovery and how you can use this to get an assessment for virtual machines that you want to move into Azure. Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about Azure Site Recovery assessments, and that's what we're going to be using to do assessments for virtual machines that we intend to migrate into Azure. I'm going to show you how to use the utility that's built into the migrate appliances and then use that to generate a report to show me compatibility. We'll talk about the actual migration process in a future video. So the last few weeks, we've been talking about how to do migrations into Azure. Now, one of the things that we talked about right off the bat was learning Azure, and then because that's a critical part of moving any infrastructure and apps into Azure. And we talked about the technologies and tools that you want to look at there. And we've spent a few weeks talking about how to do an assessment on Azure. We first talked about how to do the discovery process and what goes into making that happen. And we've done some demos and some di um, dives into the data migration assistant for SQL databases and the app migration assistant for app uh, running on IIS. Today we're going to be looking at ASR or Azure Site Recovery and how you can use this tool to do assessments for virtual machines uh, running on Hyper-V or in a VMware environment. And you can use that tool to build an assessment of all your virtual machines first by doing a discovery and then based on that discovery it'll give you some recommendations on what you need to do to migrate those into Azure and as part of Azure Site Recovery which we're not going to get into today but we will in a later video that's doing an actual migration using that tool but I'm going to show you how to set up the Azure Site Recovery appliances in VMware and Hyper-V and then show you how you can use that to build an assessment report. And we'll look at an example of one of those once we have all that set up. And as we say with assess, there's basically two parts to an assessment. We want to do, first we want to do our discovery to figure out where things are in my on-prem environment, whatever they might be. And I want to figure out what I need to do to get them where they ought to be in order to put them on Azure. Sometimes that might be some remediation. Sometimes it might not be anything. In almost every case, there is some level of remediation that has to happen for something. But in most cases, that's usually not a big deal if you're just talking about VMs because VMs will generally migrate very seamlessly into Azure. However, it's not always the case. And that's why we run the assessment report like we're going to be talking about today. So with an Azure migration, we're always obviously going to be starting with virtual machines on premise, either in VMware or Hyper-V or some other environment. Now, the way that we're going to be talking about today is going to assume VMware or Hyper-V. Because what the next thing we do is when we have all these VMs is deploy a discovery appliance into that environment. And the discovery appliance is going to connect to your environment. It's also going to connect up to Azure. And it's going to crawl your environment and look at all your virtual machines and gather information about them. It's going to look at their, the CPU configuration, the disk configuration, how much RAM it has, the operating system, and so on. And it's going to gather all that information and send it up to Azure and store it there. And this is going to be very useful if you have potentially hundreds or thousands of virtual machines that you want to move up to Azure. So once you have that information gathered, it can take a, a while to gather it all. You can then generate a report and that assessment report is going to do a, a bunch of things. It's going to look at the configuration of the VM and make sure it's compatible with Azure. So is the boot configuration going to be compatible with Azure? Is the operating system going to work with Azure? And all of these kinds of things it's going to take into consideration and it's going to generate a report and it's going to show you this machine will migrate, this one won't migrate, this one might migrate if there are some issues that I can't really detect. Sometimes it can't detect the operating system, and sometimes it might detect something about that virtual machine that wouldn't allow it to move into Azure. And that report will give you either steps to uh, the things that you need to remediate so you can move that VM to Azure, or it will just say you can't move this to Azure. You might have to consider moving this app some other way or this virtual machine some other way or replatforming the app that's on this virtual machine and migrating the new one up there or creating a VM in Azure and just migrating the app that way. So those kinds of things are part of that assessment that you will have to use in your planning part, but that assessment report is very useful for determining the way things are in your environment and then ultimately getting you ready to move that environment into Azure once you've done that assessment. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a project in Azure Migrate. You can get to Azure Migrate by searching for it in the search bar. 
Now I'm going to put that into a resource group here and just give it a project name. It does, you can name it pretty much whatever you want as long as it's in the parameters. And then you click create. Now once you have it created, you can start a discovery process. You can click on discover. And the first thing you need to do is deploy a discovery appliance. I'm going to just deploy one to Hyper-V first. So you generate a key, you download the virtual appliance, and then you import that into Hyper-V. And I'll link a description. Uh, instructions on how to import a virtual appliance into Hyper-V in the description below. That's pretty easy to do. But once you have that done, it'll run and then you can then use that discovery appliance to do a discovery of your infrastructure wherever that might be. Now it'll take a few minutes for that key to create once you click create key. No, and you'll copy and paste that and take it into your virtual appliance once you have that imported and you're connected to it. Now here I'm connected to the virtual appliance and it's running some prerequisite checks on the virtual appliance to make sure that everything's run. That can take a few minutes to do. If, it's, if it needs updates, it'll update it. But mine's all ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter the key into my virtual appliance here. Now you take the key that you copied from the portal and paste it in and hit log in. And it's gonna give you a code and, you can take, and it's gonna open up a new tab. And you're going to log into Azure. And this is what connects the virtual appliance into Azure. So I'm going to punch in my credentials for Azure. And then select my account, punch in a password. And then this will basically do a device login for this virtual appliance. And then I can close that out. That's what that screen says. And then it'll take a few seconds and it'll connect up to Azure. And once that's done, you're connected to Azure. And that means that you can start sending telemetry up to Azure. Uh, with this particular uh, virtual appliance. So once you have that key pasted in, you're gonna be logged into Azure. The next thing you'll enter is the credentials for your Hyper-V server or cluster. Now this would be Windows credentials, so it's gonna be either the credentials for the server or your domain credentials, whichever those may be. It just needs to have sufficient permissions to be able to read and change that cluster. And you can do these one off. Uh, I hit add more, I should hit save, but in any case, if you have more, you can add multiple credentials. Now here, you can either enter the, the actual servers or cluster IPs as a list, or you can add a single item at a time, which I'm gonna do here with a form. And you basically select the credentials you wanna use and punch in the IP or the, the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name, hit save. It'll validate the credentials once you hit save, they're good. And then once it's done, you go down here and click start discovery. VMware is very similar, and this is what we're looking at here. And what we're going to be doing with VMware is taking the same kind of approach where we set up our virtual appliance, we run some checks on it, and then we, well, there's one additional step that you have to do with VMware to get it ready because it needs to do a SDK install, which requires getting some files from uh, VMware's website and then installing those on this particular virtual appliance. If you run this for the first time, the check will fail. So you can go over to the download link there and I'll take you over to VMware's website and you'll need a VMware account to log in to download this. So I have one because I have downloaded uh, vCenter for this and set it up and uh, on ESXi and um, to set up my lab environment to do this demo. I'm gonna log in here and uh, what that's gonna give me is uh, a, a download where I can, I need to search for it because it doesn't take me to the page. So you basically want to copy virtual disk uh, development kit, just copy that. You can get version 6.7 or later and download that. You want to, uh, it's going to give you a bunch of download links uh, here. You can get version seven, which is I think the one I'm going to use here. So make sure you collect the right one in the SDK 7.0.u2. And it's just a zip file, so you can download that and uh, download it local, locally. And you can open that up, and uh, once you have that downloaded, you open up the actual file and extract the contents of that, but you need to get it in the right folder. So to do that, I'm going to copy that folder from the browser, and then I'm going to paste that into an Explorer window. And then I'm going to go back over to my zip folder, copy the files, and paste them there into the right folder. Once that's done, you can come back over here to the browser, hit verify, and that will install the files and then I'm all good to go for doing my discovery on VMware vCenter. So I'm back in the Azure portal, I'm gonna copy the key for a discovery appliance for VMware now, and I'm basically gonna repeat the same process. I'm gonna plug that key into the form and click login, and that's gonna take me over to Azure 
to log in and I'm going to log in using my Microsoft credentials, um, punch in my login name and a password for that. And that's going to connect this appliance up to Azure using a device login. And that will then allow me to then start the discovery process and start sending stuff up to Azure. And as before, we're going to add some credentials here. These are for vCenter. So this does not work with ASXi. You have to put in vCenter credentials here and you'll need to make sure that those work. Now, if you have some of the advanced login features uh, available, you could, there's a switch you can use to enable that. I'm just using the log, uh, username password to log into my vCenter uh, server and I'm going to plug in the IP address for this. If I can type and uh, there's my IP address and hit save. Uh, I think I got it wrong. There it is. And once I have that, it'll validate the credentials against vCenter. And vCenter is a little bit heavier, so it takes a little bit more uh, to do that login. Once you have that, you can uh, click that switch if you don't have some of the advanced uh, logins uh, turned on and hit start discovery. And that's going to start the discovery process for vCenter, just like we did on Hyper-V. Now, it takes a while for all the servers to show up, so probably go to bed and come back the next day. But once you have all those servers discovered, you can come back into the Azure portal and you should see a number of servers there. So you can go over to assess and go to Azure VM, and then that's going to take you over to create an assessment. So I want to create an assessment for report for an Azure VM, and I'm going to go say servers discovered by a migration appliance. And I have both of them here. So you should see a list of all the VMs that you that you saw um, in the particular uh, discovery process. For me, that was for both VMware and Hyper-V. So I'm gonna click on the ones that I care about that I'm gonna move moving up to Azure, which is just three VMs in this case. And that's the one I'm gonna do my assessments on. So I'm gonna select those, click next, and then hit create assessment. And then that will create the assessment report. And that can take a little bit depending on how much telemetry is uh, collected. But once that's done, you'll be able to view that inside of the Azure portal. Now my report is complete, I'm gonna go back in Azure Migrate and I see I have an assessment now. I can click on that and there is my assessment that I've done. And I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna show me the report that I generated. And this is gonna show me the information that I need to know about my migration. And I have a few things here that are interesting. I know my VM readiness. It's basically just giving me some warnings of either I have an unknown operating system, which in that case, it's actually Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux. I just wasn't able to detect it. And then the other one down there, it just says, um, it's basically saying that it might migrate this and might not, just depends. But once you have that report, you can see what can migrate and what won't migrate to Azure. And if there is a problem, then you can go back and remediate that. And it also will have some caveats associated with it. So that's a very useful tool for knowing if your machines will run on Azure based on the Azure Site Recovery Migration Utility. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Wintelect on Twitter at Wintelect now or at Wintelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.